I'm Corey Robin and I really screwed up. Let's go flying. Boom! Boy, this is gonna be a hard video to make. <laughs> uh, yeah. How do I tell this? The big takeaway for me is number one, I'm embarrassed and, um, and I just need to come clean with myself and I need to be very real in that I screwed up. And so I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened and how we handled the situation all in the hopes that uh, you can prevent this kind of thing happening to you at any level. Here I am with a couple of buddies on a river in Ohio and I give my airplane a bath. All right, so I'm gonna take the bridge. I'm gonna just turn inside the bridge here. You can see it up here on my left. So we'll kind of make a nice gentle turn over this high school here and then drop into the river just, uh, just here on my left, just shy of the suspension bridge. Looks like an old railroad bridge, that's pretty cool. All right, checking my fuel, fuel's good, fuel's good on both sides. Let's get down in the river. Heck, you can land on this bar, do a little touch and go on this one and then land on the other one too. All right, that's fun. Little, little sandbar love. The long story is, well, shoot. Gosh, I don't even know how to tell this. It's just so freaking painful. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so I have a new ferry tank that I installed on my airplane for this long trip that I'm taking across the country. And I misconfigured the, the fuel system in the airplane which caused a fuel starvation issue. Essentially what happened is I landed on a sandbar and then I checked the fuel levels. I'm looking at the right tank, I'm looking at the left tank. I realize the right tank is slightly lower than the left on purpose because I burn out of the right tank and then I pump fuel out of my ferry bladder into that right tank. And while I'm on the sandbar in between a couple of hops, I flip on the ferry tank and that's where everything goes south. I get distracted, I get out of my normal routine where your routine is your checklists, your safety items, the things that keep you safe. And a couple of factors that led me to make the wrong decisions, number one, we were filming a dumb YouTube video and that distracted me and I wanted to get the shot. Uh, one of the other pilots mentioned that if I flew over to the other sandbar, turned around and come back, he would film my landing on the sandbar that I was on. And so that was a distracting factor. And also the new fuel bladder was the cause of the issue. Oh, Golden Eagle, sweet, right in front of me. And I flat out misconfigured it. Um, the normal process is you switch to the alternative tank and fill up the tank and then switch back preventing any error from getting into the system and I failed to do that. So I left the fuel selector on the tank that I'm filling from the bladder and then the bladder became uh, empty. It, it emptied itself throughout the course of the flight and since it's a high pressure pump it began to pump air into the fuel system and if you watch the footage closely you can actually see the air bubbles making their way into the tank I get about 10 feet into the air and because I don't want to go too fast and accelerate, you can see me in the video reduce my throttle and that is the point where the engine starts to choke because of the air in the fuel system. And I literally had moments to get the aircraft on the ground. I immediately knew what I had done. You can see the look on my face as I look down at the fuel selector and I notice that I'm still burning on the right tank and I reach down and I switch it to both. I give the throttle one pump to try and get it to come back and you can hear on the audio, 
the engine trying to come back and then it just quits. From there, I, I didn't have the ability to make any further decisions. It was, I'm committed to landing in the water. And like a deer in the headlights, I kind of froze. I landed the aircraft on the water as best that I possibly could and got it as slow as I possibly could. Um, I landed with one wheel on the water first and began a slight turn away from the, the other pilots on the other sandbar because I didn't want to hit anybody and I just felt like I might have been too distracted. And I also wanted to reduce the drag, so I only set one wheel on the water until it was absolutely necessary to set the other wheel on the water. And then you can see, as soon as I set that other wheel on the water, it was just a matter of a couple of seconds. The propeller stops and I nose over. I, at this point, had no idea how deep the water was. But I just got very lucky that the water was only a foot and a half to two feet deep. Aircraft comes up on its nose. And at this point, I'm just in shock. It was such a gentle... There, were, there was no jolts. There was no big crash. It just felt like I settled the aircraft onto its nose without any drama or big jolt. I just kind of come forward in my seat because I'm obviously sit, you know, staring down at the water and I just turned into rubber. I, I remember the other pilots coming and saying things to me, but quite honestly, I don't remember what they said. The whole aftermath of the thing, after for a few seconds thinking that you might die, you might end up swimming for your life in a river or whatever the case may be, um, I just kind of became in shock. I was rubber-legged. I, I remember trying to come up with coherent answers to their questions like, are you okay? Is probably what they said. And I probably said something. I probably said, yes, I'm okay. Um, I was just trying to not sound like an idiot. But I was definitely in shock, at least for, for the next 30 to 45 minutes. I was literally just in a state of, you know, I just was a deer in a headlight at that point. Um, the saving grace of the incident, um, the slow speed performance of the carbon cub combined with some of the lift that the river was providing. And I was able to just get really slow and settle into the river bottom very gently uh, because the aircraft was undamaged. We looked at it in disbelief for 30 to 45 minutes after the incident, took the cowling off just it looked at everything very closely and we just couldn't believe that nothing was damaged and quite honestly I don't think that it was anything other than just dumb luck just where we settled in to the to the sandbar the the bottom where the nose came in contact with the the bottom of the river was very soft sand and rocks it was almost like nosing over onto a pillow as if you had done it on purpose it was very it was very surreal for me because I didn't feel any big jolt. Um, you can actually see the camera footage of the camera I had out on the left wing where the wing dunks into the water but doesn't come into contact with the, the, the surface, the, the rocks and the sand at the bottom of the river. It just comes close. You can see the camera get close because it's right on the leading edge and then kind of retract back out of the water. Um, so I didn't hit a wing. The only thing that touched the bottom was my spinner and it was just surreal. I don't think that there was, there wasn't much I could do at that point. The real failure was mine in that I didn't use my normal procedure, my normal process, which is a checklist where in my Super Cub, it's simple. I move from the left part of the cockpit to the right part of the cockpit and it's fuel selector, throttle mixture, carb heat, you know, all the fundamental things you learn in your primary flight training. And because I got out of that routine and my master switch was already on and I was talking to another pilot about getting the shot for this YouTube thing, I just got out of my process, hit the starter and went without even checking my fuel. And I had it completely misconfigured because when I had turned on the fuel pump to pump fuel into that right tank, 
I was on the ground and I anticipated getting out of the aircraft and then I might have had an opportunity to then get back into my process. But since I never got out of the aircraft, never unharnessed, I never went through my procedure. And so the failure is mine. There's no excuses that I can give anybody, especially myself. I mean, I could have been killed. I could have killed myself. And it's something so simple as not using your checklist, getting out of your normal process. And there's only like five things in your pre-start checklist in a Super Cub to check. And I didn't check any of them. I went mixture and turned on the aircraft and took off. This was completely preventable had I not distracted myself. That's the big takeaway for me. Now for you as a viewer, what you can take away from this is um, when filming, I'm not saying don't go out and film YouTube videos because heck I'm doing it, why would I tell you not to do it? But fly the airplane first. Filming and everything is way down the list. Um, if you catch yourself, if you're ever able to catch yourself, and this is difficult to do because obviously I didn't do it and I do this all the time, I didn't catch myself getting out of my process. And I think there's a, a level of self-awareness you have to have and a level, level of humility and respect for what you're doing in your airplane. Because I, I thought I was a safe pilot, I thought I was immune to these poor decisions and I'm just not, I'm not immune to it. Even though I've been doing it now for a few years, I'm not immune to making bad decisions. And I got very, very lucky. So the biggest takeaway that I want to communicate to you is stick to your processes. Checklists are important. And don't skip anything. Every single time you turn on your airplane, make sure that you're inside of your normal zone, in your normal process so you can operate your aircraft safely.